So I was working on polishing the fishing system in my 2D RPG when I came across a problem with the ripple particles that I had created. When near the shore, they would cross the edge of the water into the sand. I tried fixing this with a mask, but that didn't work. I went through every possible forum page imaginable until I came across a possible solution. Shaders. Realizing I had no idea how to make a shader, I decided to do what any other sane person would do. Spend the next couple of weeks doing a deep dive to learn every possible thing one can about this seemingly simple topic and doing everything in their power to put it into practice by making a beautiful ocean as a solo developer with no art or shader experience. <sighs> Should be easy, right? If you enjoyed this video and you want to see my process as I develop my game, please subscribe and all your wishes will come true. Hopefully. I, I can't promise that. Since I started this project, I have been wanting to make the ocean. As someone who grew up at the beach, the ocean in real life has always been something magical for me, so I want to do it justice. I want to make the ocean that gives the island its name, Emerald Isle. I started my research into shaders by asking ChatGPT some simple questions. How do you make a shader in Godot? What happens after we die? Can you make me a beautiful ocean using a shader in Godot? Oh, that was easy. Let me copy and paste this. Oh, what the fuck is that? It looked like ChatGPT was not going to be the solution to all my problems, so I turned to YouTube and began watching tutorials. I came upon a beginner shader tutorial by GDQuest and learned how to actually create and edit a shader in Godot. This taught me the basics, but I still had no clue how to put these lessons into practice to create an ocean. That was until I stumbled upon the holy grail of YouTube videos. Jess Coates is actually the best of all time, and I was able to use her guide to create an amazing ocean. I highly recommend checking her channel out. I created a black abyss as a starting point for the ocean. I first made the ocean have a color. Godot uses a different coding language for shaders than it does for scripts, which threw me off at first, but I was able to get used to it pretty quickly. I then made it so only the black part of the ocean is edited, not the white edge. I also added a texture. If you don't see the problem right away, these outlines should help highlight the issue. The texture is being applied to each tile of the tile sheet. Textures in Godot are processed using an image and coordinates known as the UV. The default UV is based on the current tile it is modifying, when instead we need to base it off of the world coordinates. If you take the global position of the pixel, we can then multiply it by whatever size we want to place the texture seamlessly in the water. If you have ever looked at water before, you'll notice that we are missing something. Water moves. To add some movement to the ocean, you can apply Perlin noise to the texture we created earlier. The noise is based on a speed variable and the current time. Adding this to the UV, we now get some movement. You may notice that the water texture is now pixelized. Without this, the noise causes a weird stretch that really breaks the feel of a pixel art game. To make it pixelized, all that is needed is to floor the global position of the pixel used as the UV. The current texture is really flat. Let's add a highlight effect. Using another texture that lines up with the original texture, we can apply highlights to the caustics of the water. These highlights are also affected by the noise and motion to keep a consistent look. Now that we have highlights, we need to add the opposite. Lowlights, or shadows, which is what normal people call them. Another noise texture is used to reduce the alpha of the water's texture. This makes it appear darker and thus creates moving shadows. The ocean is really starting to feel alive with these simple changes. You know how light often shimmers on the surface of the ocean? Let's make that. I added this sparkle effect to the water in a similar way as the highlights. The difference is that this time I used a second noise function that gets rid of some of the sparkle texture. This has the desired effect of making the sparkles more sparse than the highlights and creating a very effective shimmer effect. We now have a good ocean, but I want it to be great. I find myself tweaking the ocean parameters to no end and I'm going to have to stop doing that if I'm ever going to get anywhere. Obviously, the coast is still awful, but we can fix that pretty easily. What I really want to do is add the illustrious water gradient phenomenon that can be seen at the real life beach of Emerald Isle. The cool crystal blue water that fades to a deep bold blue as you go out from the beach is something that I really want in my game. I created a gradient based on the Y position of the pixel to create this cool effect, which looks just like how it does in real life, and I love it. But I know this isn't right. I have to create a gradient in a different way, as a huge issue will come in the future. This only works because the current shoreline is completely straight, when it will not be like that in the actual game. I need to create a gradient that is not based on position within the world, and instead distance from the shoreline. I tried a few things to determine distance from the shore, but in the end I decided that I would create a height map. 
I made a bunch of ocean tile variants, each with a different height value. After placing these in the world, the ocean is still the same of course, so I had to create a method of generating a height map. ChatGPT actually did help me with this part, and I was able to create code that turned the height values of the tiles into a PNG image. Now back in the height map, I placed this image, but it's not in the right place. To place the image in the right place, you have to adjust the UV coordinates similarly to how we did for the water's texture. If you take the world position, then subtract the height map location, the UV coordinates place the image in the right place. Each tile is just a pixel in the image however, so we have to scale the height map up to fit correctly in the game world. We now have a working representation of the depth of the ocean. I created a color gradient variable and mapped the colors onto the grayscale image and BAM! We have a beautiful gradient in the ocean. Right now there are these bands that I believe are caused by the hard edges in the height map. I thought changing the image to bilinear sampling would fix them, but the bands persist. I mostly fixed the issue by doing something really simple. I added more differing height values and mixed up the ocean to not be perfectly straight and I'm not sure why but that completely solved all my issues. Using the same method as the color gradient, I created an opacity gradient that reduces the opacity of the water close to the shore. This makes it so you can see a little bit of the sand underneath the water at the coastline, which gives off a nice effect. With a working ocean shader, it was time to create a coastline. I changed the edge tiles to be animated to simulate waves. Waves. Speaking of waves, how am I supposed to create waves? I always knew that I would get to this point. I always knew I was going to have to attempt to create waves, something I believed I would be completely unable to do. Obviously, I tried ChatGPT, but after failed attempt, after failed attempt, after failed attempt, whoa, that one looks cool, still a fail though, I thought it was over. Sine waves weren't working, cosine waves are basically the same thing, I mean what even is a wave? What about this? The gradient moves based on a sine function and time. Passable, but not particularly good. I mean, do I really need to add waves? Is it the point of a game to create a realistic interpretation of the real world? Or is it the point of a game to express artistic creativity while making an engaging experience? As long as the ocean is pleasing to the eyes and gets the idea across, it does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be realistic. It, it just needs to make an engaging experience. I may go back to the idea of adding waves in the future, but it does not make sense for me to spend lots of my time experimenting trying to implement something that is not necessary for the game. While waves are not necessary, I feel like seafoam on the edge of the water is something that I really want to add. My goal is to add a texture around the edge of the water. My first attempt had the seafoam backwards, as it only appeared in the deeper sections. When I inverted this, the foam instead appeared on the outside of the water. I eventually found a function that worked, and the foam only appeared around the edges. Just don't look over here quite yet, since I haven't finished the world that's technically an edge. I then made it so the foam fades out as it gets deeper, but the edges were a little too dim so I increased the brightness in the super shallow water, while still including a fade out effect. To finish the sea foam, I reused the Perlin noise function to add some variety and movement. I technically made a couple of these changes before adding the seafoam, but I thought including the changes here would fit better for the video. I made it so when the player walks into the water, they well, actually walk into the water instead of being video game Jesus. I used a mask to update the height of the texture based on the depth of the water depending on the tile data, the same data used in the gradient. I then added little splash particles for when the player is moving in the water. The particles use a similar shader to the ocean in order to match the color of the water. I also added ripple particles while standing in the water and made them move out a little bit when walking. After all this time and energy put into this project, I now have an amazing ocean that really fits the style I am going for in my game. The moral of the story is that when looking for a solution to a seemingly simple problem, you may get distracted and just so happen to create an entire ocean system. And that I never even fix the issue particles still show up on my land. Um, whoops.